Hi, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com. If you're interested in upgrading your Synology to a QNAP system, then watch this video. Let's first start off with the background of my backup system to see if this video is relevant to you. I'm a photographer and videographer and I also take personal pictures of my family and videos in 4K. Storing those videos and photos are very important to me. Just to give you a little bit of history of my upgrade strategy from my different systems, I started off with a Drobo which was directly connected to my computer. Downfalls was that it was slow and not only that, I had to have the computer on at all times. The next step was upgrading to a Synology which was great. In fact, I've had that for the past couple of years. One of my most popular videos is upgrading the Synology RAM. The biggest challenge I had was backing up files over my local network from one Synology to another Synology. I have a one gig ethernet network throughout the house. I've got that upgraded. I also went through some upgrading strategies with that. If you're interested, check out one of my videos. I'll put it up in the card or in the description below. I'm switching over to two QNAP systems. One, the TVS 672 XT, which will act as my main NAS. And then the backup, which will be downstairs in a closet, will be the TVS 472 XT. Now, the reason why I went with these two units is because they have built-in 10 gigabit ethernet networking. Since I didn't have 10 gigabit ethernet switches in my house, and I can't really afford to upgrade to Ubiquiti yet, I decided to go with these Netgear 10 gigabit switches. The biggest challenge with this is that there's heat issues that I've read on the reviews. I'll do some testing with, uh, with that with a thermal camera, but in order to alleviate that, I wanted to see if these laptop coolers will work. I don't know yet, but keep an eye on that. This video will mainly be the unboxing of this unit and then setting it all up with installing everything. I'll also be installing these Seagate 6TB Ironwolf Pro drives into the main drive. And in the smaller drive, I've got some other drives I'm going to set up. And I also have these crucial 500GB NVMe solid state M.2 drives. And before I install them, I'll test it without it installed and do some file ta transfers to test the speed differences. This should help with caching for both read and write. And hopefully that will help with the speed of transferring the files. On the right, I have a OWC Thunderbolt 3 to 10G Ethernet adapter. My third tier is a backup drive that it can take off site so that I can secure it that way because there's no point of having a backup within the house if something happens to the house, your, all your data is compromised. Let's get started with the unboxing. I'll start off with the main drive of the TVS 672 XT. I'll put all the links in the description below if you're interested. That'll point to my Amazon affiliate links. It's no extra cost to you, but it helps me out if you uh, use those links. Inside, it's secured with these really nice styrofoam custom fitted padding. And it's wrapped in this plastic. So let me get the plastic off. IEC cable that plugs directly to the back and the drive itself. Here's the drive unit itself comes with the power cord. This is a six bay unit and also has space for the M.2 drives that will stick in there after some initial testing without it. On the back, got two main fans, uh, USB ports, uh, the 10 gigabyte ethernet and two one gigabit ethernet ports that you can you can also bond if you want two gigabit ethernet and then you've got the speak the microphone in and speaker out and there's an hdmi port if you want to manage the console directly to the drive all right let's go ahead and do the installation of the main drives the other plus 
that I've seen with this is that it has a display unit that indicates um, the status of the drive itself. And there's also a USB in the front if you want to connect a USB drive. I think that was the plan with this SATA dock. So essentially I can plug this in via USB, import or export on this drive, take that out and store it offsite. And I'll probably just fast forward through these. These should be pretty f straightforward. Let's actually just start with this one. Okay, it looks like uh, you pull these little tabs out. Okay, one and two. Got it right here. Slide the drive in. Replace these tabs. I want to say the Synology sleds are a little bit easier because you don't have to remove these tabs. But again, these aren't that difficult. And here's the final drive. Uh, just real quick, it looks like there was another box within the box and it has the quick installation guide, a limited warranty, and uh, a heat sink. That's probably uh, the heat sink for the M.2 drives. I'll go over that in the other video. And it looks like I missed some bolts that I have to install onto the sleds. Um, so it comes with a bunch of black ones and a bunch of silver ones and some empty okay some empty ziplog bags okay thanks for that QNAP. it looks like it comes with two heat sinks which is good i've got a, a shielded ethernet cable a non-shielded ethernet cable i'm guessing this one is probably cat six and that one's just regular and another regular ethernet cable to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and screw in those bolts into these drives. And let's see, I'm guessing, I don't know if it's the black ones or the silver ones. All right, according to the quick start guide, it looks like I need three bolts per drive. So let's just screw these in. I'm not going to screw them in too tight. Okay, that completes all the screws that need to go in. And now I know why they left me some Ziploc bags to put in the extra ones. In fact, I'm going to probably use those for the next drive. Now let's unbox the backup drive, which is the TVS 472 XT. Okay, this is nice. This box actually has the accessory box right on top, which makes it a little bit more obvious. And inside is a very similar setup. We've got the quick start guide, the screws, the shielded 10 gig, Ethernet cable and the two probably Cat5 thinner cables, unshielded. Put this aside. There's an IEC power cable as well. And it comes nicely packed like the Big Brother. The idea I have with the backup is that it has, it's smaller, it's four drives. I'm gonna use two 12 gigabyte hard drives in this. In case of an emergency, this is easier to pick up and go, uh, if I even do that. So part of the backup strategy, as I talked about, I have the off-site backup system. And also I'll set this up to back up some critical documents and photos to the cloud. On the back, We've got similar connectivity. 
We'll start from the top with the HDMI port, the 10 gig Ethernet port, USB ports, uh, the two one gigabyte Ethernet ports that can be bonded, and also the sound in and sound out. Let's flip this around and let's get the drives installed on this one. The tab for the plastic came off, so I, now I'm having to use my nail. There we go. Some people actually like that noise. I'm not sure why. There's also another plastic. I'll get that off later. I've ordered these a while back, so I don't even remember what these were, which brand these were. Oh, these are also Iron Wolf. Okay, the sleds look the same. Pop off these tabs. And then screw in the drive. And each one takes three screws for the Iron Wolf. Not only is this drive going to back up my main drive, which is this one, and for those who are new to NAS or, and are wondering why would I bother having a backup if I have a NAS drive, just remember that a NAS, just because you have multiple redundancy for the individual drives, it's still not a backup unless you have two physical copies. So this is actually going to mirror this one. My other use for this is hopefully I can replace my Mac mini server with a separate hard drive and load the media to here and use this as a Plex server. So I look forward to some of the videos with that testing in mind. Let's install this first drive and install the second drive. This is like an ASMR unboxing. These 12 terabyte drives are pretty sharp looking. It almost looks like it's made of pure titanium or maybe aluminum. I really don't remember screwing in the hard drives on the Synology, but then again, it was years ago. But if the quick start says to screw in the drives, I'll screw in the drives. I'm guessing it helps with vibration. So this should be a total of 24 gigabytes. I'm actually going to have those in a non-rated configuration because it's just a backup of this. No need to do redundancy in this one. And what I'll do is I'll probably fill in the last two bays to act as my media drive for the other old hard drive. But we'll do that later. All right, here are the two drives unboxed. And let's go ahead and unbox the rest of this stuff. This is the OWC Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabyte ethernet adapter. I got this in Amazon. The links are in the description below. This will connect to my Mac. And I believe they don't need a driver for this. It says here, the Mac OS usage notes. The drivers required to support the OWC Thunderbolt 3 10G ethernet adapter are installed as part of your Mac OS 10. 13.4 and later the adapter is ready to use when you're power on your computer great that's awesome i believe i also have thunderbolt on my windows pc looks like the drivers should be installed automatically and if no drivers are installed to go to this website and download the appropriate zip file for both 32 and 64-bit versions and the other note says that this can be hot or get warm uh, for long duration transfers and this is normal and the adapter may also operate at a higher than expected temperature when connected to a long cable run interesting i never saw that in any of the reviews i've got the uh, thunderbolt here on the cable it's connected directly to this i wish there was an option to use your own thunderbolt cable just in case this ever breaks or becomes worn down and here's the 10 gig ethernet. It looks like it could also downspeed to 5G or 2.5.
will show up as yellow and in 1G to 100 megabit will show as yellow. When it's connected as 10 gigabit per second, it'll be green. We'll test that out as well. Now let's unbox this Netgear. And what this is going to do is connect my main NAS to my switch upstairs, which I'm going to replace so I can get 10 gigabit ethernet. And then I can also connect it via this to the Mac. And so what I might do is have this connect to one port to the 10 gig and then the other 10 gig go down to the second floor down here, have this connected to this backup system. So I have these two drives connected via 10 gigabit ethernet so that when this backs up to this one, there is no delay in terms of bottleneck. And then I'll also install these on top of, I'll somehow get these installed through this because these don't have a fan. Let's start off with this Netgear. This specific model is the GS110EMX. When I move the contents of my Synology to this QNAP, I'll have my four ports bonded on my Synology to get four gigabit ethernet or four gig speed and hopefully I can back that up faster. Look forward to that in the next video because I'll be testing that configuration. Okay, inside is an installation guide. We've got three simple steps to peace of mind. Essentially there's a Netgear Insight app. Insight app. So inside we've got the switch. I just wish that this had four 10 gig E ports. We've got some rack ears. I'll just leave those in the box because I'm not going to use those. Bolts and some wall mounting bolts. And the AC power. Alright, so as you can see, this is a pretty slim unit. Doesn't look like there's a fan inside, but there are some venting holes here. And what I'm thinking of doing is taking one of these laptop coolers from Opolar, sticking that to the side of, sticking this to the side here. Comes with different size boots. So I'll have this plugged into here to provide some ventilation. And it looks like I need to install this bottom plate. And I'll get that figured out. I'll do some testing separately in another video of this GSX, I'm sorry, this GS110 EMX from Netgear. I'll show some thermal testing of this without the fan and some testing with this with the fan to see if it's even worth getting the fan or not. Didn't see any options related to that. So hopefully that helps you out in another video. So definitely subscribe if you're interested in that. This concludes the unboxing of my new backup system. Just wanted to get the unboxing out of the way because the main thing that's important is doing the setup and I'll have that in a separate video. If that's something of interest to you, definitely hit that subscribe button and it'll come up shortly because I'm going to record that section next. Thanks for watching.